Well, grace to you and peace from our God and Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, dear friends, what is it that motivates you personally to do what's right? Certainly within our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, we have always taught law and gospel, haven't we? We've often stressed that the first thing that must motivate you is the law. And, you know, we, we have the law today, don't we? The law is you better do it or else. Simply, right? If you listen to the, the messages, you know, from today, the, the beautiful song that our organist picked for us, right, that we need to choose life. If we don't choose life, the promises will be forfeited. That should hit us almost like a ton of bricks, really, shouldn't it? What do I need to do to respond to God's love for me? I need to choose life. I need to do things right. I need to do it according to God's will. But yet, of course, after the law has done its work, we always long to hear the gospel, don't we? No, after I got hit with the stick, I kind of like to see the carrot in front of me, perhaps, right? And each of us were kind of different in our own ways. Maybe for, for some, you know, we respond better to the, the threat of the stick, but maybe for others of us, we respond more to that carrot that's held out, right? And the, the carrot really is that profound love of God, isn't it? That he loved us so much, he sent Jesus into this world so that he could make us slaves. No, no, that's not it, is it? And you know what, as much as we, we might appreciate that, you know, we would say, you know, we, we were slaves of Satan, and then Jesus came, and he bought us, and now we live in a pretty nice uh, mansion, even though we're still slaves. We would say, well, it's much better to be a slave to Jesus than to be a slave to Satan. Right? It, it, it's a great improvement, right? Certainly that would be the case. But no, instead, you know, God comes and he tells us that Jesus died on the cross so we could be his workers. His workers? Saved. Yeah. No, Jesus died on the cross so we could become God's children, right? No, as good as it would be to be able to go from being a slave of Satan to, you know, working in God's factory, you know, right? It would certainly be an improvement, a step up. You know, God even goes beyond that and he says, we are his children. Now, uh, dear friends, for, for us, of course, we're still using a, a little bit older uh, liturgy. And, you know, may, maybe for, for some of you, as we're going through the, the liturgy and we're going through the confession of sins and we come to that point where, you know, it, it says that we are the sons of God. Well, maybe for some of you, you ladies especially, you're saying, well, why do we still do that? You know, I'm, 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 I'm not a son. Right? Why, why is that still there? And it really, it, it's because in the Old Testament times, I, I, you know, up until maybe even a hundred years ago, it was the sons that got the inheritance, wasn't it? You know, and, and certainly that, that began to, to change, but I, I can remember even when my own grandparents passed away, the sons got the farm, right? 
And then, of course, my grandma and grandpa wanted to, to make some provisions for my mother as well. And, and so, you know, she, she got, you know, so, something else. But in the ancient days up until, you know, 50 years ago, it, it was like that, wasn't it? And, and so everybody kind of understood what it was to be a son. If I'm the son, I get the inheritance. If I'm a son, I share in all of those promises. If I'm a son, it means something really special. And, and dear friends, that, that's kind of why, you know, it, it, it's still in, in our older liturgy, you know, that, that we are the sons of God. We, we maybe would, would update a, that a, a little bit today because it, in our particular culture, at least, you know, that things have changed somewhat. And I would suggest to you that we could just as easily read children of God. And you say, well, I, I like being a, a child of God. But we, we could just as easily do that. But, you know, I, I, I want to explain that a little bit. You know, why do we still say that we are the sons of God? It's because from the Old Testament times up until about 50 years ago, you know, to be a son meant you got the inheritance. And Jesus, he, he comes right out and he says, you are co-heirs with me. Now, it, it, it's not supposed to, to be confusing, although maybe some confusion could, could be seen there. Because you would, would say, well, does that mean Jesus is my brother? Does it mean he's my brother? Yeah, it does. It means Jesus is your brother. It means that you are so special to God that you're going to have a share in the inheritance. It means that God loves you so very much that he is going to begin to see you as equal under the law with Jesus. You're going to get an equal share. You're going to have your part. It should be amazing, shouldn't it? Wow, you know, Jesus is my brother. I am a child of God. I am a co-heir with Christ. He says, I'm going to dwell with him in the heavenly places. Have you ever run into one of your friends or neighbors and they're kind of half joking about what heaven is going to be like and, and they just kind of say, you know, I, I hope God just kind of lets me slide in the door. You know, and, and if I could just kind of be a, a janitor in the basement of God's house, you know, that, that's maybe all, all I want. But guess what? We're going to receive even more than that, aren't we? No, you, you don't have to be the, the worker that kind of comes in the back. And you kind of change in the servant's locker room, you know. And you put on your little janitor outfit and then you just kind of stay in the basement, clean a few things here and there. No, God says, you are my child, you're going to share in the inheritance. He also tells us you know, he has you know, mansions prepared for us. Now, you're not just some little drone working off there in your own corner, but God sees you as his children. That's how much God loves you. Not just that he felt sorry for you, you were a slave of Satan, and now you're going to be his slave, and you can live in those you know, outer huts out there. And, and not just that, that he felt sorry for you, so he hired you for his factory to be his factory worker and kind of you know, change it in the, the locker room for factory employees. But he says, you are my child. You're mine. 
You, you belong to me. I have adopted you. And as, as I had kind of gone through before, right? You are my son. But yeah, of course, that, that means, you know, child, co heir, one who is going to equally inherit. Dear friends, when we begin to consider how much God loves us. I know for, for me, you know, personally, that seems a, a little bit more motivating, perhaps, than if, if I stand up here and say, you know what, you guys are all going to lose your inheritance. You know what, you better shape up or God's going to come and you're just going to get wiped out. You know what, you better, you better, you better. Well, sometimes maybe we need that little bit of kick in the pants, don't we? But it's often so much more enjoyable to be able to talk about the positive part, isn't it? That God loved us so much, he sent Jesus to die upon a cross so we could be adopted. You know, that's like, like God and his special forces going in to, to rescue you from being taken by terrorists, you know? It kind of maybe even sends a, a little chill up and down your spine, doesn't it? You see, God loved you so much, he sent Jesus into that dangerous situation, knowing that he was going to die in order to get you out of there, in order to bring you home again, in order for you to be adopted, to be called, yes, sons, yes, children, children of the Heavenly Father, safely in his bosom gathered. Maybe you heard that in Bible school years and, and years ago. But that's the love that God has for you. That you would be called children of God. And that is what you are. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be in your hearts and minds now and always.